Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by UFC lightweight Darren Cruikshank. Darren, how are you? Uh, pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Darren, congratulations on your victory at the tough finale over Chris Tickle. Darren, walk me through the entire process of the Ultimate Fighter. Let's start back at the tryouts. What was that experience like? So the uh, the first tryout is a grappling match, and then if they like you, you go to a uh, mitt work, and if they like you, then they move you on to a uh, personal interview. Uh, the process is actually really stressful and very uh, very emotional. Because I tried out a few years ago when it was US for UK, and uh, I was only three and with an amateur, so I you know I tried out and. Got my wrestling or my my grappling match in, and it was done. You know they didn't. Want me. So uh, going to these other tryouts, you know I felt like okay, you know uh, got a little bit more experience and I uh, got a good professional record. Hopefully I can make it through. So uh, you know after the grappling match, um, it, it was a grueling grappling match. They, they make these rules. You know you start on your knees. You're not supposed to go to your feet. There's no. Uh, you know, ankle locks or submissions from the from the hip down, no slamming, all the stuff. Well, each match, everybody basically just took those rules and threw them right out the door. Right. <laughs> uh, and it wasn't a minute; it was a minute and a half. And it's like, wow, you got to get through this and impress the judges uh, to get onto the next round, or the entire thing is done. You went out to Vegas for no reason, you know, like. So uh, I got done with my grappling match, and it was a grueling match, back and forth. The, uh, the guy that uh, that I grappled is actually from the Alpha Mal uh, program. So I grappled this kid, and he got me into a triangle, and I turned the wrong way, and he was like, oh, shit, this guy's going to uh, choke me out right here. Well, I got a little little energy surge, picked him up, stood right off my feet, had him in the air, kind of like a Rampage Jackson kind of thing. And if he didn't let go of the triangle, I was going to put him on his head. Right. <laughs> but, uh, so that was a bit of a little intense, uh, but they liked us both. I moved on to the next, uh, to the next thing, which was mid work. I hit, I hit the mitts. I brought my buddy Cody Stammen out to hold mitts for me. Um, and I hit mitts for maybe 15 seconds. And they were like, okay, you're good. You can, uh, you can go on to the next round. Everybody else was hitting the mitts for two, three minutes. So uh, that felt pretty good, and then uh, then my my interview, which is only like maybe a minute or two long, you walk into this this room and there's there's ten people in there and they're all in suits and they ask you a bunch of questions, not necessarily about fighting, but just like where you're from, what kind of, you know what kind of person they they're trying to get just kind of a vibe from you, um, which is you know kind of stressful, um, but then they're like, okay, well. Wait for a call. They don't tell you when. But, so I get the call, and there's another trial, right? So they fly, right. fly me back out to Vegas, uh, and then it's like a week of week of interviews, photo shoots, uh, medical. They do the whole nine yards. I, I did all that process, and then they're like, okay, well, we'll call you. <laughs> really? Don't tell us when or, you know, uh, how many weeks or months or whatever. But, uh, so my buddy that tried out, uh, made it all through that process. Jason Fisher, he's from Michigan. He made it through the whole process, and, like, three weeks after that, that second trial process, he gets a call and says he's not going to be on. So I talked to him, and I'm like, oh, man, well, I, you know, it's kind of cool. I, I haven't gotten a call. Sorry about that, but I haven't gotten a call yet. So about a couple days after that, I get the call saying that, hey, uh, you know, you're on a show, we're going to have you come out. Uh, they're like, you know, we can't, we can't tell you what's going to happen. Uh, but if, if you are to have to fight in, to get into the, to the house, it would be on this date. Blah, blah, blah. So they didn't really want to say, like, okay, you're fighting to get into the house. They said that they could tell me whether I am or am I, or we're not fighting to get out. So, uh, you know, get my weight control down, uh, get ready in case if I do have to fight. Um, and then they brought us to uh, one of the hotels in Las Vegas. Uh, for, I want to say eight days we were in a hotel uh, before the fight of the, to get to the house. And uh, actually the funny thing is, is you had to, you weren't allowed to call anybody. They took your phone. 
going away. Uh, they had where you could call for room service or you could call to set up a training session where they take you down to this gym all by yourself and you work out basically by yourself. Oh. Well, I was dialing the wrong number to get a hold of them to set up training sessions. So I'm sitting here in my room freaking out like, why aren't they answering? Why aren't they answering? For like two days, I just worked out right in my room. I had a box. <laughs> I had a case of water. I was doing, like, kettlebell movements and stuff like that. I had my own drop roll, blah, blah, blah. So eventually, I, like, seen one of the guys in the hallway, and I, like, ran out there, which we weren't supposed to open our door. And I was like, hey, why aren't you guys talking to me? I'm going invest in here. Why <laughs> not, you know? Right. So that, that was kind of funny. You said that you were trying trying to dial to get a training session. What number did you end up calling, or it was just some... No, no, no. Can... The thing was, is you were supposed to dial seven oh. for the number. Oh, I and see. I didn't know that, and it didn't say that anywhere, like on the paperwork or anything. So I'm like, what the hell? No one, you know, I was dialing the right number, but I wasn't pushing seven before that, you know, to, to dial out or whatever. Yeah, I, I see. Oh. Yeah, I'm retarded. So, you're ready to fight Drew Dober. What's going on in your head? So, yep, they, they announced I'm fighting Drew Dober. And, uh, you know, he's a tough kid. I don't really know anything about him. He's just got a really big head and big caps. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that I guess, you know, some guys are like, oh, yeah, he's supposed to be this awesome striker, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I never really listen a whole lot about, you know, what a guy's good at or whatever. You know, I just kind of worry about, you know, where I'm good at and, you know, try to keep it there. So, uh, so I fight Drew Dover. One five-minute round. You know, it, it, uh, it's a pretty fast pace when you're only going one five-minute round. It's it's not, okay, I had three rounds to win this fight. It's one five-minute round. I'm either in the house or I'm out of the house. Uh, so it, it's it's a sprint. It, it's more of a, like, almost like a street fight rather than a, than a sport, you know, because it's either, there's no feel-out process. There's, boom, you turn on, and the round's over. And either you win or you lose, you go into the house, or you take that lonely, long trip back home, you know? So, I won the fight. I felt like I was trying to knock him out. I kind of felt bad about uh, I wasn't satisfied without getting that, that $5,000 to, to knock him out to get to the house. So, but I was satisfied. I'm in the house. Right. Uh, and then, after that, they were like, hey, we got now Who's got the first fight? Or oh, well, they did the pick. Actually, yeah, they did the picks. I'm on my favorite team. And then shortly after, you know, the next fight is the next week. And favorite came up to me and was like, hey, you know, you're one of the guys that are really supposed to win this show. Uh, you know, we want to get you out there, get your fight over with, and on to the next round. That way you have some time to rest and develop a little more and get ready for the, the semis or the, the quarterfinals. And, you know, everybody knows it didn't happen like that. Right. You know, I uh, I shot in, and, you know, sometimes I'm just too fast. I ran into his knee, and I knocked myself out. Right. So, yeah, I fought Dave Big. Uh, tall kid, you know, you know, he's a decent fighter, real tall, not as much experience. Um, so, that's who favor one of the matching up against. And, you know, I started up the fight, uh, and it didn't go my way. You know, he was a better man at the time. Uh, I'd like to see a rematch between me and him later down the road for more money, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, yeah, you know, another fight's in the house on, the re- on my record. So it's not official to get fight up now. Looking back on it now, do you feel that it would have been better had you waited, had you, you know, fought, you know, maybe the third or fourth fight? Because you were the first guy up. Would it have been a little bit different had you fought later? Because you would have been more, you know, uh, acclimated to the team and how they corner you and stuff like that, or did it really not matter? You know, that, that's the thing is, you know, I was the first fight. I don't know that my coaches, you know, I didn't uh, get any time in between fights to rest and stuff like that. You know, like I had bumps and bruises and big lumps on my shins from throwing kicks and stuff at Dover, you know, but it was, it was a gamble for me, you know, get the first fight out of the way. And then I'll have like five weeks not to fight. And that was kind of what I was thinking. And my weight was already down. I didn't really get out of control. You know, so the, the weight cut was easy. Uh, but then again, you know, I was fighting two weekends in a 
the ball. So that was, you know, it was a gamble. And I, I tried gambling, and it didn't work out. So. What was it like after you had lost? How was training different? Were you, you know, kind of separate? Because the guys who are going to fight, they need a little bit more coaching than the guys who, you know, already had lost or, you know, already had fights. What exactly was training looking like during that time? Well, uh, I got knocked out. So I was on a 30-game suspension from contact. So what I did was I kind of switched my gears to helping the other guys, drilling with them. Uh, getting them ready for their fight, holding mitts. I almost became a part of the coaching staff, kind of, for, for the, the time that I was uh, suspended from training. So that's basically how I, you know, kept vain and stayed focused and, and uh, you know, just looked at the looked at the guys, my teammates, as, you know, true teammates and tried to help them get to the next round. Now, the in-house stuff, a lot of the fighters who've been on the Ultimate Fighter before say that the worst part is, you know, the no TV, the no cell phone, you know, no video games, none of that kind of stuff. Is that something that affects you? Are you one of those guys who, you know, needs to have internet, needs to have a phone, stuff like that? Actually, you know, right now I have my phone and all this crap and my Xbox and all that stuff. I almost, I miss being in a house where there's no stress, there's no outside interference. All you do is wake up, you go train, you come back home, you eat, you sit by the pool, you go back to training. You come back home, you eat, you go to bed. Uh, you know, I, I almost prefer it. It's, uh, it, you know, it made it super simple, you know. All you did was think about training and fighting in, in the house, and you didn't have to worry about all the other superficial things like, oh, what TV show's on, my like, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it, none of that stuff mattered. Uh, in the house, you know, I mean, you find ways to, to take up your time, I mean, you know, like, uh, they had a chessboard in the house, uh, I picked up the game of chess, and it was almost, to me, it turned into, like, playing a video game, uh, you know, there's, you know, there's all kinds of other crap you can do, and, uh, yeah, I had a good time in the house. What's the best part and the worst part about being in the house? Being in the house? Yeah. Uh, the best part that I'll always uh, probably take with me yeah. is the, the relationships that I made with my teammates and my coaching staff that I had. Uh, I felt like, you know, seeing those guys living in the same room every day uh, put us on like a fast track to to being, I don't know, making a relationship, a tight relationship with these guys. You know, I haven't seen them since the show, but we still stay in contact. We still joke around via Twitter, text messages, blah, 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 Facebook, you know, and eventually I want to be able to go out and see these guys at their own camps and go stay a week here or two weeks there and, and you know, just kind of reunite with them. The worst thing is being bored and sitting in the kitchen and just eating as much as you want because they would bring you whatever you wanted, yeah. you know. You, yeah. you, you, mentioned that, you mentioned that on the show, they, they had you filmed and you said something about that. Now, Darren, Ronda Rousey, she showed up, she was training with Team Cruz. How come no one on Team Faber, like, you know, when she showed up at the house, was like, oh, my God, there's a girl here. How come nobody did that? Like, that would have been funny. How come no one did it? Well, you know, it was, like, almost halfway through the season. We right. Were, we've been in the house for about a month and a half, maybe a little longer, I think. We haven't seen a girl. Right. Let alone a hot girl in, uh, you know, a month and a half, right? Right. So, you know, seeing a hot girl, you know, a little, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, intimidating. And this girl that's hot is in the house, could take my arm home with her if she wanted. You know, it was it was actually, you know, I don't know, it's just uh, been out of the game for a while. Uh. <laughs> and the thing is, is, you know, there's no chance. I mean, come on, you're in the house. She's going right. to leave in the next day, blah, 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 right. whatever. Right. Uh, you know, most of us have girlfriends and stuff. Right. But uh, the funny thing is, is I remember walking into the Ultimate Fighting Training Center, and it's our turn to practice, the red team's out, and, like, we're all, like, putting our bags down, and, and Ronda Rousey walks out of the locker room and then walks through the gym, and I'm like, who is that? Blah, blah, blah. And, like, I, I, uh, I had to go to the bathroom to, to change. I walk in there, and it smells of perfume, and there's, like... 
like uh, like a lipstick uh, thing with lipstick on it, like on the on the counter. And I'm like, holy shit! Like <laughs> it's a girl smell. It right. smells awesome. So everybody comes smell this. You know. Right. <laughs> It me, but, uh, you know, it's kind of weird, but, oh well. Yeah. yeah. So, this thing with Tickle, I mean, he, you know, the water bottle thing, we all know that, it was, you know, they showed it on the show, this stuff. Was there a lot of bad blood with him, or was it just that one time, and, you know, they just decided to put you guys together? Is anything there? Well, uh, me and Tickle, we were, like, he kind of joked around on his team, I joked around a lot on my team. Um, you know, so, so it wasn't, like, at the beginning, we set rules and stuff as far as pranks and, like, you know, back to anybody's like, personal stuff. You know, stuff like that. Nothing with food. Uh, so, throughout the whole season, it, it was actually pretty... I mean, we did a bunch of pranks, but I don't know what got on TV. Uh, that that instance right there, like, me and Tickle, you know, I consider us, you know, have a pretty good relationship. Maybe not our best friends or whatever. He's on the other team, but no beef or anything. And that, that situation, you know, it's just, I was sleeping, and someone took the bottle at me, and, and, and hit me in the nuts. You know, it was just, um, wrong, wrong time, I guess. Right. I'd say, you know, if I, if I wasn't sleeping, and, and, oh, okay, it was funny, blah, 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 you know, I might not have reacted the way I did, but my entire life, like, uh, I was in a dorm room, blah, 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 like, no one ever walked by my room and was loud, it was just, like... I don't know, I've always had, like, an anger problem if someone wakes me up out of sleep kind of thing. And that was just the wrong wrong thing to do. And uh, he was the first person I'd seen, so I just let a couple rip off. Right. <laughs> without thinking, you know. It, it was all reaction. It wasn't like, okay, so I'm going to get get him back. It was just, I was, you know, furious about it. So, right. I mean, it's not the right way to handle that. And if I, could, if I was not in the state of mind as I was, I wouldn't have handled it like that. I've never been in a street fight. You right. Know, so. So the, they make the announcement that you're fighting Tickle. The, the show ends. Then what do you do? What happens when, when the, the you know the guys leave the house? Where do you go? Well, we, uh, they moved us to the Palms. Uh, and we were not in the Ultimate Fighter's uh, hands anymore. We were put in the UFC's hands. Uh, we sat in the, you know, we had our, our own rooms. Uh, they would take us to, to the, the fitness center to get in a sauna. We had, like, there was a workout room we could work out in. Um, so that week, the week of the fight, we were we were just like a, a real UFC fighter now. Right. You know, we weren't catered. Uh, they didn't bring us food, stuff like that. Um, so we had to fend for ourselves as far as that. So, uh, you know, we got ready. I brought my, my dad down, who... Uh, is like my striking coach, and then one of my teammates from home, Cody Stamen, the same guy that held mitts for me at the trials, brought him out, and another guy named Vince Murdoch, he's one of my uh, one of my guys too, but uh, brought them out, got ready for the fight, and uh, my dad, Cody, and Faber in my in my corner against Tickle. Now to the actual fight itself, how did you feel you performed? I felt good. It was the way he came at me was. You know, he, he he came at me to try to knock me out with one punch. That's that's how he he came at me as far as striking. Um, and I feel I'm a I'm a good striker. And it was it was like there was there was no feeling out again. There was it was almost more like a like a street fight. Like as soon as he had all that pressure and I go forward, it was just like we both just met like two rams. Right. And then you know once we get to that range of fighting, you have kicking range, you have boxing range, knees and elbows, and then you go to grappling range. We went almost from striking to grappling right away. Right. Uh, inside trip, take him down, and from there, continue to hit him with an elbow on his face. So, basically what the whole fight was. Were you surprised that he came out that aggressive, and when, you know, he started to try to push, you know, push the fight and, you know, try to get in your face, did you feel that, you know, maybe if you wait a little longer, you would gas him out and eventually, you know, be able to take him down and stuff like that? Well, uh, I mean, right away, he, like, rushed me, and, uh, I think I took a shot there, and we ended up into a, heat, uh, yeah, guillotine choke. Uh, the choke was tight, but it wasn't in, it wasn't under my jaw, and I felt him squeezing and grunting, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna sit here 
uh, let him wait some energy for a little bit. Um, and then, then he threw that up kick, and, right. uh, which was very aggressive. Right. Uh, he, he, Tickle is a dirty fighter. <laughs> um, he threw that up kick, trying to take my head off, which is illegal. He hit me. The only places that hurt the next day was the back of my head from him throwing all those punches to the back of my head when I was on a single leg. And the back of my back when I was in his guard, he threw like a like a like a heel kick right. in my back, which is also illegal. My back hurt for like three days. It's like started. So if anybody ever fights tickle, be careful because he's dangerous. He's, he's a dirty fighter. After the fight, were you relieved that you know you were able to get past him because he tr- he turned into that into that guy on the Ultimate Fighter that he's kind of goofy, you know. He became that guy for this season of the Ultimate Fighter. Were you relieved that you got by him? Is you don't want to lose to the guy who's considered that guy, you know, the kind of goofy guy for the show? Uh, what do you? I, I don't know what you mean. Well, you know, Tickle. He had you know his whole little thing with Dominic Cruz. He had th- this whole. Um, you know, he he didn't really, you know, get serious about training and stuff like that, and he was kind of like the clown of the show, basically. Oh, right, right, right. You know, uh, I don't know how much of that is true. I mean, you got you get into the house somehow. You, everybody's right. good. If you did the season ten times with the ten same, or with the same guys, there's going to be ten different winners every time. Right. Everybody in the house is is good, and any one of them could win. You know. Uh, so I wouldn't take anything away from Tickle. He's a skilled fighter, and that's how you make it to the house. You know, it, it's not that he was like the the easy guy of the house. There is no easy guy of the house. Right. You know. Now, after the fight, is is that when they come in with the contract and sign you? Because usually the guy who who wins at the finale, he gets to continue fighting the UFC, and the, the loser gets cut. What exactly happened after? Or was this right. happening and before? Before the fight, they said, okay, well, if you win, you will move on and keep on fighting in the UFC. The guys that lose uh, will not have that chance. They will have to go out, get more fights, get more wins, and then come, you know, come calling back again. Right. You know, so uh, I don't know as far as what those guys got, but um, you know, I'm pretty sure I got a contract. Uh, I haven't signed anything yet, so oh. <laughs> we'll see. Now, Darren, I'm just curious. The nickname change. You were the Detroit superstar, now you're the international superstar. Why the change? Yeah. I didn't change it. Oh. <laughs> so, I just, when I showed up in the cage and they said that, I'm like, uh, okay, I'll just go with it. So, I don't know. I've never really fought overseas other than Canada. I've yeah. never kind of fight in Canada. B- because... Over there, they were calling me the Canadian killer, so... Yeah. Like yeah. Because in in the pre fight stuff and all that, they were saying Detroit superstar. Then when the the introduction start, Bruce Buffer saying international. So I thought that maybe you know you were on the Ultimate Fighter and you know you reached worldwide. I don't yeah. know what, what was I don't going know. on. They, yeah, uh, they didn't really tell me, and the UFC does what they want. Yeah. So hey, if they want me to be known as the international superstar, I guess I'll roll with it, right? Right. Right. It feels like they want to promote you. They care about you. I mean, you. Some of the organizations that you fought for in the past, like I mean, Bellator. You just you basically just had a cup of coffee with them. They were supposed to put you on a card. Your opponent, you know, was injured or whatever happened with him. They pulled you off, and you know, you never fought for them. Ringside right. MMA. They they brought you in to lose. Basically, they put you in a yeah. title fight on a one fight deal. Like you know, do you feel yeah. real comfortable with these guys? You know, the UFC. It feels, to me, it feels like they're taking care of me. Right. Um, I feel welcome there. And, uh, you know, Uncle Dana, again, you, you don't get a better uncle than that. Right. So, <laughs> right? Right. Darren, I'm going to say it. Uh, you know, sh- everyone th- says that, you know, Shoney Carter, his spinning back fist knockout is the best one ever, but I'm going to say it. Your spinning back fist knockout in your um, pro debut, I believe, the best one ever. Yeah. Would you agree? Uh, I would agree. I actually have another one. Oh. Uh, just before that fight, I had an amateur fight, and I fought a guy at the Palace of Holland Hills with a Pistons fight, and right. I knocked him out with it. And he was, uh, I fought him Saturday. He was in a hospital from the, from the back fist to, to, like, Tuesday. Oh. Like, yeah. So, like, I have a hard back fist, and, you know, I don't really use it a whole lot anymore, but... I would say, yeah, I would say it's better than Sean Carter. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, you know, it, I actually, in that, in, that, in that one that you've seen, I 
through a, uh, the back fist. Yeah, fist. yeah, I was gonna, yeah, so, I, I was gonna say that it looked, it looked like a back fist and back kick combo. It looked like that. Yeah, and I the threw, back fist. Yeah, yeah. I threw a back kick immediately after, but he, you know, like, he wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. I, I, that's what I was going to ask you. Was it just whatever landed first you were going to stick with? Like that's, that's right, what I was. Right, yeah. right. Well, when you throw the hand, if they block the hand, they beat the kick. Yeah. So one fitting one's going to hit. One of them's right. going to hit. So, right. Yeah. And, and I, th- I thought it was great. You hit him with the spinning back fist. Then, then you like put your hands up in celebration. Oh no, he's you know he's still in it. And then you pounced on him. I thought that was that was great. Yeah, well, what happened when I hit him, and I knew I hit him, this guy's out. Uh, you know, his head popped up, but that was just a, like a muscle, to, like uh, his body tensed up. And the ref didn't call it, and my dad was like, hit him again. So I smoked him again, and then the ref jumped in. Right. So, yeah. Now you you said you didn't sign anything with with the UFC, and you know no, nothing's in place. Yeah. But when would you like to be back? Like, what's a good a good month or like, something? You know, I, I don't remember signing anything. I mean, I signed all kinds of shit oh. when I was on a show and stuff. But I don't, you know, whatever. Um, I like to fight almost as soon as possible. Right. You know, I didn't take any injuries in the in the tickle fight. My weight is still down, and you know, I've been training, so I'm ready to go whenever they call me. Right. Darren, from what I understand, your birthday was, I believe, was Monday, so late happy birthday. Thank you. And Darren, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you would like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Um, well, I would like to thank uh, my mom <laughs> and my dad for helping me out throughout my whole life. Uh, you know, my girlfriend, I always forget to thank her, Tim Bondi, uh, Proven4.com for giving me a bunch of vitamins, and... You're Dana White and all the important guys there. Thank you for giving me the chat. Right. Darren, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Yeah, 